at our story begins when someone comments on one of the bad endings of this game. We see the whole city destroyed with lightning striking and buildings collapsing and comments that this girl is not a simple villain and said that within the world that had fallen into despair, she wanted to destroy everything and we see the girl's appearance more closely with rabbit ears and some marks on her face that look like cracks. Before we continue with the video, I ask you to subscribe to the channel we're on target to reach 10,000 subscribers. I'm counting on everyone's help and continue with the video. The girl suddenly raises her hand and the narrator comments that the mid-level boss of this world is the Witch of Calamity. While she raised a powerful magic and floated under the air, circulating her magic with blood red, and she says, smiling, that this world is no longer necessary. And he says that her name is Yon Hanuel, and she says again that she will make everything disappear right now. We see that she was crying blood from her eyes, with her her eyes red and throwing a power towards the ground, and the narrator says again that in the scenario in which they didn't manage to kill her, every being in the world will cease to exist, until a game over message suddenly appears and asks if he would like to try again. And they comment that this is the bad ending of the game, and we go straight to the real world outside of this game, and to a sunny and ordinary spring day, and we enter the student's classroom, saying that a new semester was starting in a fifth grade class. Some children say that it's great to be in the same class, and the other asks where she lives, and if they would like to go home together, and the teacher calls everyone's attention and asks them to sit in their chairs, and the teacher says that they have a new friend who has just arrived and asks her to introduce herself to the class, and the narrator again says that this mundane, everyday life would fall apart very soon, and says that she was an incredibly weak blue color until the little girl introduces herself saying hello and that it's nice to meet them all and the students fall silent at the sight of her and the narrator says that she has a round rabbit tail and long rabbit ears held high on her head and she says her name is Yon Hanuel a little embarrassed and backing away as well and the narrator says that that day after looking at this new classmate but before he could say it he hears what the girl has to say saying that her hobbies are reading and listening to music and it seems that our protagonist looks at the girl closely while she continued saying her hobbies, saying that she also likes watching dramas, while our protagonist says that he had remembered his past life when he saw her and he is horrified, saying that, however, there was no reason for him to dive into nostalgia, since in front of him was someone who had a more mature voice than before. The girl goes on to say that she'd like them to get along while she's in class, and he remembers the previous girl crying blood, saying that this world is rotten and stands on top of the school building saying that he'd better disappear. And the narrator explains that she is the witch from the calamity that had wiped out the whole world and we return to the present, with the cute rabbit introducing herself telling them to take care of her. And the same. Narrator says again that she's that mid-level boss, Yon Hanul, and he thinks he's so sure he can't deny it, even if he wanted to, and he puts his hands to his face, not believing it, and thinks they're all lost now. And finally we begin our story for real, with the narrator commenting on the game, calling it Brave Hearts, and that this game, which our protagonist liked to play in his past life, was about a boy who dreamed of becoming the best hunter in the world, the apprentice of fighting spirits, Kang Habul, and says that this was a school action, role-playing game with this protagonist, and says that this game takes place 200 years after a cataclysm, saying that there were monsters and hunters in a world with advanced science and magic, and that for the protagonist to become a hunter, he enrolls in the Jew Gang Academy in the educational city and encounters various possible scenarios. Up to this point, it seemed like a stereotypical plot of youth, a school life, but this story was not as bright as it seemed, and we see various fine print appearing and blurring the black silhouettes. He goes on to say that this game has 44 endings, and they were mostly bad endings, and that's because most of them were total world collapse endings, and this game had another big problem too. He comments that he had a soft heart and a cowardly swordsman character who could never fully show off his skills and he was completely useless and annoying and he would even run away during battles if possible. He says he's an innocent kid who doesn't know how to hate people even when he's being bullied. He's a frustrating crybaby who doesn't even think about defending himself against things. The character is a cancerous member of the protagonist's group and that character is our protagonist in this story and we focus on our hero and he thinks that the rabbit 
of divine sword art Du Kian Wu, and he starts to remember in his thoughts, totally terrified, saying that if he was going to be reincarnated, why would he have to be such a useless character like this guy? And as if all that wasn't enough, he had ended up in the same class as this very dangerous character in the game. While we see the shy girl sitting at her desk doing absolutely nothing, and we couldn't imagine her outcome, he gets sad. He also thinks that no matter how hard he tries, he wonders if this isn't beyond his capacity, and he thinks that he's scared and it's over for him, and the other boy next to him asks what he's doing, until the teacher calls out to our hero, Du Kian Wu, and he suddenly gets scared, turns crying to the teacher and thinks of the rabbit girl, and we see the same shy girl, and again, he keeps repeating himself, saying that this girl had become the witch of calamity in the game, saying that she was a character who seemed to bear the suffering of the whole world. He explains that as soon as she was born, she was abandoned by her parents, and she became the victim of other people's mockery, and she was considered a monstrosity, receiving not a shred of affection from other people, and that she lived a lonely and tiresome life. He goes on to say that all this happened due to a mana disaster born with mutated DNA, saying that she was an Ain. Our hero thinks he's heard that an Ain's appearance and DNA don't match those of her parents, but even so, abandoning her because of this, he still thinks it's crazy. He stands in front of the room while the teacher says something, and he stares at the girl, thinking he understands why she has become the witch of calamity, but he still can't sit back and let the fall of the world happen, and says that the easiest solution would be to get rid of the little girl before she can become a calamity. Our hero clenches his fist and wonders about this, thinking that he wouldn't want to do this, and wonders if there is another way, until he suddenly has a glimpse in his mind, and the teacher tells him, our hero, to go to a classmate he wants to sit with and do it if he s accepts, and he thinks that this is what he needs to do, and says that he needs to change this girl's way of thinking about the world. He starts walking and thinks that Hanuel in the game, because of his unfortunate circumstances and environment, resented the world. However, if it's now, a time when the game's story hadn't started yet, his actions could change the future as he walked through the class, and he thinks that among the villains in this game, Yon is the one with the ability to destroy the whole world. He approaches the girl who was reading his book and says hello, and the girl is doubtful, and our protagonist says that in this case, it will help Hanuel not to be pessimistic about the world they live in. He asks the girl if he could sit next to her while smiling and thinks that if he makes progress, maybe he can bring her to his side. While the girl seems confused by this and wonders if he is talking to her and he thinks that he can reinforce her strength. He explains that it's five years before the start of the game's story and we see the two of them walking together and he says that before enrolling in the academy he has to become friends with Yon Hanuel and we see the two of them running together and he says that after guiding her to the right path he can simply transform her from a calamity to a blessing of this world. Our protagonist decides to sit down at the girl's table and says that she will be our hero's date from now on and asks her to take care of him and he smiles at her saying that her name is Du Yon Wu and asks them to be together and he thinks that this is how he became childhood friends with the mid-level boss while the little girl agreed to become friends and again we get a boring recap saying that in order to change the witch of calamity Yon Hanuel who resented this world he became friends with her and returning to school he thinks that even so how could he get close to this little girl until she notices that he's staring at her and asks him to stop staring at her and he apologizes for it and he thinks wondering if he's been staring at her for too long and says that he should stop thinking that and just ask her directly to come to his house. The little girl was walking away from school and our protagonist wonders if that tale of hers is for real and someone catches his eye and he's suddenly startled asking what it is. She approaches him and remains silent and our hero asks what's wrong nervously and she asks why he's sitting next to her also nervous about it while our hero thinks that perhaps it would be better if he said something to her and he says that of course he'd like to be her friend but the girl doesn't seem to believe it being surprised and she gets nervous asking him why and why her too asking this several times he says that he just wants to be her friend and asks what else it could be and he notices that the girl's ears have risen and she gets nervous saying it's strange and asks why he wants to be friends with someone like her and she says he's also from a famous fencing family and our protagonist stares and she gets more discouraged.
discouraged as time goes by until he decides to say something, saying Mongchil, and he suddenly points his finger at the little girl and says she's as cute as a rabbit he has at home, and he says happily that he really likes rabbits and his rabbit reminds him of one of them, leaving the girl silent while trembling until the girl becomes totally embarrassed, saying that she's not a rabbit, shouting at our protagonist, and she starts to run while our hero wonders if this has made her angry and he tries to apologize to Hanuel, holding out his hand until she decides to stop for a while, becoming silent again, and she says that they'll see each other tomorrow, becoming embarrassed again, and she runs off again, and our hero notices that she's just run away, and he thinks that fortunately, he doesn't think she's mad at him. While walking to school, he thinks that he can't believe it yet, that he has actually entered the world of the game while walking. He wonders if this world is a game. He wonders why he can't see his status window. Although he's not a player in the game yet, however, he looks back and decides to go to a secluded place and try to open his status window, holding out his hand and shouting until a status window suddenly appears, and he thinks that it has and wonders if he should take a closer look at it. And he's in doubt and confused too, and notices that Du Kion Wu's skills are actually pretty good, right? We take a closer look at the status window, and he has an evasion instinct with his respective skills, with his psychological strength being at 37, muscular strength being at 34, defense at 32, agility at 43, his mana being at 30 and his luck being at 25. And he thinks that this is really good, and he wonders why he was constantly being bullied in the game having these skills, and he holds out his hand, saying that this is a new beginning with a good life, and says that it can't even be compared to his former self, saying that if he had lived like this in the past, it would have been different. We see a huge house that our protagonist enters, and he says he's home, and starts to take off his shoes, and someone asks if he's back. His mother smiles and asks how school was, and asks if everything is okay with him. Our hero then faces his mother, and then, in the blink of an eye, runs up to her and hugs her, and his mother asks, what's wrong? And our hero thinks that he's not living his past life, and shouldn't even think, as if he were still living inside the game, and should live as Kyan Wu would, totally, and he looks up to his mother, saying that it's nothing, and he just felt grateful to have his mother in his life, and she says that if anything happens, he should let her know immediately, until his mother asks him to go and wash up, and says that she's going to give him a snack before going to the sword training academy, and he accepts and rushes off to take a shower. Kion Wu thinks that he needs to do something for a living just like that same boy in the game, saying that what he needs most right now is a sword technique that represents a prestigious fencing family like his, with the technique being called Beast Ring Style. He reflects, saying that like a lion who rules over all animals, he is focused on the point of his sword, and says that it is also a sword technique that had made Kion Wu the greatest swordsman. He approaches his pet rabbit, calling him Mongshil, saying that he is here, and we see that he is male, and he approaches his rabbit's cage, smiling, until he decides to take it out of the cage and takes it in his hands, saying that it really does look like a rabbit, and he remembers the angry girl, saying that it's not a rabbit, and he thinks that he should fully master the King of Beasts style, until a while later, he goes to what seems to be a dojo, and thinks that there are few people around, thinking that he is ahead of schedule, and he thinks that these sword training academies operate in several cities, and people outside the family learn conventional fencing instead of the king's best style, saying that this is why many people attend this training academy, until several children start staring at someone, and he wonders why they're all staring, and he notices someone, seeing that it's a girl from a renowned family, saying that it's Du Siam. He explains that she is from the Du family, a family that specializes in sword deities in a lightning flower style, and the girl's name is Du Xian, and he explains that she is two years older than our hero, and she is the most promising prodigy among all the children of the family's current sword deity, and he explains that in the game, she is a student at the Jumgang Academy, and she goes on to become the strongest swordswoman after graduating, and he says that she also becomes a strong ally of our protagonist, Du Kion Wu, and he wonders why she's here, and he thinks that it's not as if she can't come here, and it's more about being a Du Family Sword Training Academy, and he still keeps thinking about it, thinking that they'll see each other often, after all, and he thinks about concentrating on practicing the King of Beast style, until he puts on his training clothes and picks up a 
stick, saying it's time to start practicing, and he starts swinging his sword until he feels something and swings hard. Using the Beast King style, his first form, he starts sighing, thinking he's done one, then he does the second, third, fourth, and so he keeps swinging his sword until he reaches nine, and he wonders happily if Xi'an would be impressed by him, and he wonders why this is so much fun, and it's nice to get sweaty like this, until some boys ask who he is, and we see three identical boys, with one of them asking, what's wrong with this boy, and he wonders if the rabbit is practicing too, until we see that, the boy eating is called Wu Jumdong, and he wonders if it's really the rabbit, while the grumpy boy asks why he's here so early, and we see that he's called Wu Yundong, and we see the last of the three, who is called Wu Dong Dong, and he wonders if he could use this, in a real fight, and bets that he can't even catch a real rabbit with it. We see that it's the trio of three identical triplets with wolves behind them, and our hero explains that they are the extra characters called Cerberus in the game, and the children who bully our protagonist as, well, he thinks they're doing it because of his cousin, because of Seung Wu's influence, and the children ask why he doesn't answer, and our hero gets furious at this, thinking he's frustrated, saying it's his first time not being able to concentrate, and he clutches his sword tightly, and the child asks again why he doesn't answer. He thinks that, of course, that wouldn't be the only reason why he can't concentrate, and there's a reason why he's angry now, and wonders why he let the three of them bully him like that. He thinks he remembers everything that happened to Kunwu in his past life, and wonders why he couldn't fight off the harassment from these guys, and he says that the head of the family must be ashamed of him, saying that he's a disgrace to the family, and the kids started hitting him, saying that he's sorry for this kid's parents, and wonders what that's all about and asks if he's really crying, and he realizes that the reason for that is because he hated hurting people, and the kid asks if he really was crying, but going back to the training, he thinks he knows now, and the kid says that's totally stupid, and what's the point of swinging that while laughing at him, and another kid asks if he should become his training partner, and he says that's it, they'll help him, and asks what he thinks of that, our hero thinks to himself that the human body is not weak at all, until he holds out his wooden sword and says that they're going to do this, while smiling, saying that they're going to play like it's a real game. At the training ground, we see that several children are impressed by something, and our protagonist was using his Beast King technique, basic technique, and the second form, called the Charging Stance, and he strikes a strong blow to the belly of the boy who was bullying him, and sends him flying away, while the other boy calls him Jundong, but we don't know who is who, until his brother comes up to him and asks if he's alright, saying that his nose was bleeding, and they ask what's wrong with him, and the boy who had been hit says he couldn't see that, and our hero puts his sword under his shoulder and asks if he doesn't think that's all there is to it, and asks again what he's doing, asking him to hurry up, pick up his sword and get up quickly. The boy who had been hit was still dazed, and his brother comments that he's a very strange guy, and they say he's changed, and he tells him not to overdo it and just get up, and says that people wouldn't die for something so ridiculous, and he remembers the day they beat him up, and says that he, our protagonist, who had been bullied by them in the past, can say that for sure, until the boys ask him why he's doing this to them and ask him if he's crazy or something, and tell him if he knows who they are, and ask him if he's really going to let them get away with it, until our hero says terrifyingly and asks who, asking if it's his cousin, Seung Wu, and he asks why he would protect the three of them for nothing, and the three boys are silent about it, shocked, and remember their past. One of them says he'd like to become a hunter, the other agrees, but someone comes along and says that the fees for hunter education are too high. To put it mildly, it's unreasonable, until they realize that talents are sponsored and ask if the fees will be free, and they go straight to a boy, and he asks if they want to be sponsored, and he accepts, saying that it's nothing difficult for him, with an evil look in his eyes, and says he'll be at the same school as Kion Wu and asks if he'll see him often, and we're back to our protagonist, thinking he was, letting himself be bullied, taking punch after punch from them, and our hero says it seems they'd forgotten something important, while the twins wonder how he managed to do it, and he comments that he's also part of the Du family, and it's easy for him to remove them from his family's list of sponsors if he asks his parents, leaving the three boys in a panic, and he asks them if they didn't think straight that he was the only one who could, right? And the twins wonder how it all ended up this way, until someone suddenly 
suddenly enters the room, offending them and asking them what they're doing now, and he shouts, saying that he's told them several times not to train without permission, and he catches Kion Wu's eye, saying that even if he's not a model member of the Du family, he can't do such things. But before he can continue, he's interrupted, with our hero pointing to the side and saying that they were the ones who started this in the first place, and the guy is shocked, and Kion Wu asks if he wants him to be quiet while they criticize him when he's one of the Du family, asking if that's what he had mentioned, and the guy asks if he had really upset him, and the boys fall silent and start looking around, trying to pretend they don't know anything about it, but suddenly, they shout that they started it, and say that he's right and they've cursed him, and say that it's not his fault, and our hero comments that that's what he was trying to say all along, and he thinks that's refreshing really, and thinks he should have done it before we move on to his school, and he thinks that from now on, he'll be abusing an eye for an eye, and he wonders if he's arrived too early, until he notices something, seeing that the rabbit girl is reading her book at the desk, and he watches her intently, until he decides to say hello to her, but the girl gets embarrassed when she sees that he's there and covers herself with her book and responds in the same way. As he was about to sit down, he thought he would try his best to make friends with Hanuel today, and asked her if she had arrived early and read the book, asking her if she liked reading that much, until the girl starts to stutter, saying yes, and asks what he does too, and he comments that he actually likes web novels better, and she asks why he joined the book club then, and he says he did it because she signed up too, and she replies that she understood, but she's suddenly embarrassed, noticing what he'd said, and he asks if she reads web novels too, and she replies that she does, but she doesn't have much money, so she can only read the free ones, and he thinks he's made a mistake since Hanuel lives in an orphanage, and he thinks this is the chance to change the subject, and he asks her what kind of drama she likes, and she says she likes luxury house, and she asks how he knew she likes dramas, until he says it was because she said so during her introduction, and she's embarrassed thinking that he really remembers that, and she reflects on herself, wondering why he came to talk to her, and she wonders if the reason for that is because he doesn't have any friends either, until she guesses that he's doing it out of fascination, since she's an Ain, and we see that she suddenly becomes sad, and says that after a while, he'll lose interest in her too, just like the others around him. We are shown that she has become even sadder, suddenly lowering her ears, and our hero thinks that her ears really are quite interesting, and asks if she wouldn't like it if he asked to touch them, and he smiles, thinking that she really does look like his pet rabbit, and thinks that now that he thinks about it, he too has been there, until he takes out his cell phone and shows her the video of his rabbit, and asks if she would like to see a video of Mongsol, until she shows interest and asks if he is talking about his rabbit, and he says that he made a cute video of him yesterday, and she watches it with great interest. He says again that when rabbits are in a good mood, they jump around excitedly, and that's what they call a binky, and she's delighted with the rabbit, saying that it's very cute, and he watches the girl next to him, excited. Kion Wu asks her if she'd like to see his rabbit. She nods yes, but is suddenly shocked and asks what he said. But he holds out his little finger and says that they'll play at his house after school. But she's embarrassed, saying that she has to refuse, thinking that she doesn't want to relive this again, until she starts to say something. But the scene quickly changes to Kion Wu's house, and she's shocked to see what a huge house he has. And she says that he has a beautiful house, just like in Luxury House, and our protagonist's mother starts walking over and asks if she's a friend of Kayan Wu's and asks if her name is Hanuel, and she welcomes him, and our hero welcomes his mother too. Hanuel remembers her past with the parents of one of her friends telling her not to play with Ains, making her sad, saying that she can't trust anyone. But back to our hero's mother, with her smiling and saying that it's the first time. Kayan Wu has brought a friend home, and she can't imagine how happy she is, and tells her to make herself at home, until Kion Wu asks his mother if she can make Tidiakbaki, a Korean dish, for them. As she shone a golden light, she blocked Hanuel's vision, and his mother agreed to do it, until he took her hand and escorted her into his house, telling her to go in quickly, while Hanuel thought that his curiosity wouldn't last long. But even so, she didn't want to let go of that hand. Entering the house, she thinks that the interior is big too, being delighted by it, and decides to eat the food together with our protagonist, while his mother smiles, and she goes to visit our hero's rabbit, while he licks her, and Kun Wu 
Wu is annoyed that the rabbit likes her more than him. In the evening, still at our hero's house, we see that his father has arrived home, and he says that his father is back, smiling. Kian Wu's mother says that he was a little late today, and he approaches her saying that he really is back, and he smiles. See the girl crying on the floor, saying that she would like to see her rabbit sister too. He explains to his father that his friend came today, but Yi Yun wasn't home to see her, and that's why she's angry, and we see her trying to swallow her tears. Kion Wu catches his father's eye and asks if they could train together after dinner until his father is happy about it and asks if it's serious, saying that he wanted to know when he could play with him, and so now it's happening since he's in fifth grade now. He tells his father that he wanted to see how much he had improved, but he also wanted to have experience in real combat, and his father wonders about that with a slightly serious expression, until he confirms it by putting his hand under his chest and says that he would like to kill some monsters too. At night, in Kian Wu's house, we see his father standing on a platform, and we see the two of them standing on something white with wooden swords, with his father asking why he wants to train all of a sudden, saying that he doesn't need to get impatient, and that it's not his time to face reality yet, and asks why he's like this, until he explains that five years from now, he'll be entering the headquarters of the Family Sword Academy, saying that he will inevitably encounter crises while solving various incidents alongside the protagonist, Kang Hanbyul, and he says that in order to do this, he needs to have a good idea of what real combat is, like saying that he is sure that the other children in the family have had combat experience, too, and he says that he is far behind them and that he needs to catch up with all of them. Now, and he stares at his hand, his father is silent watching this and asks if this is because of what happened at the sword training academy just now, and he asks what he's talking about, and his father says that he heard that he had fought at the sword training academy and the boy he had fought had been hurt very badly with an angry expression, but says that however, he had said that he hadn't done anything wrong for it, and his father stares at him again with a serious expression, and Kion Wu thinks that actually, he seems to be interested rather than scolding him, he thinks that he would never fight for no reason, he lowers his head and says that he has long since learned that his family's divine sword is meant to protect and save people, and he says that he has taken this very seriously. Kion Wu comments that he wouldn't have known if he hadn't thought about his past life, about the things he had been through in his previous life, and thinking about the future, which had changed his mindset. He asks that before that, shouldn't he have been able to protect himself? Asking again how someone who can't protect himself can resolve to protect others. His father asks if that's why he fought them, and he replies that that's exactly what happened, saying that in order for him not only to protect himself, but also others, and for that to happen, he needs to kill some real monsters. And his father looks frightened, until suddenly he smiles and tells his son that he's not wrong about that, putting his hand under his head and saying that his attitude about it is totally valid, and comments that he's changed a bit too. And our hero happily asks if he's going to help him in this case, and his father agrees, saying that he clearly will help him, but there's a condition to it. And Kian Wu asks what that condition would be, and his father lowers the wooden sword, asking him to prove that he's developed the skills to get into a fight with a real monster, and he says that this is his condition for training him, and asks him if he accepts it, until he raises his finger and says he has one more thing to say, saying that he won't use mana, and says he won't move more than five steps, then asks him to feel free to attack him if he wants, and Kion Wu asks about the Beast King's style, and he says he'll only use the basics, and our hero says he understands, he thinks about these conditions, saying that he had told him this, but he can't hesitate to hurt someone with a sword, until his father says he's ready to start calling his son forward, and he thinks he'll do exactly what his father says. He prepares his sword and his breath until he advances quickly towards his father, but his father repels his blow easily, and Kion Wu falls backwards with it, until he catches momentum with his feet and jumps again, and prepares another attack towards his father, again, but again, he defends the attack easily and our hero attacks from above, but he defends this blow again, until his father smiles, saying that this won't work, until he notices something interesting, seeing that Kion Wu is about to attack him again, but this time it's different, he launches his blow, and his father ends up moving away from him, and noticing that his father had lost his balance, he thinks that the time is now, 
and quickly advances towards him to attack him again and uses all his strength in the blow, sending his father's sword upwards and his father smiles, asking if he's going to use it. But before he can raise his sword, he suddenly feels a pain in his back. He looks back to see what's happened and we notice that Kion Wu's wooden sword has hit him and he quickly moves away from his father. His father tells him that he let him hit him but asks him how he could hit him so hard, almost crying, and our protagonist begins to sigh heavily, saying that so that he can recognize his ability, and his father gets angry, saying that he has really grown up, not even hesitating to hit his own father, and he begins to laugh and asks him if he passed the test, and he says that he did and calls his son a rude brat. The next day, his father decides to do what he promised and tells his wife and daughter that they're going now and says that they'll probably be home before dinner, and his mother asks if he's sure he'll send him there, and the girl happily says that she wants to go too, and she continues talking, asking if Kyunwu isn't too young for this, and if it isn't too soon for him, and we see the two of them remain silent about it, and his father comments that it should be fine with him, and asks his son what he thinks, and he confirms the same. His mother still feels scared about it, and asks him to be careful and not to overdo it, and he agrees with her, asking her not to worry about it, and that he'll come home later. Already in the car, his father asks if he's ready, and says that they'll go to the clan academy, until finally his father drives there, and Kyunwoo thinks about it, thinking that according to the game settings, the world has become drastically unstable since the moment of the calamity change. He says that as a result, the phenomenon of dimensional distortion occurred over time and strongly influenced the world. He thinks it happened when monsters started coming out of the distorted dimension, leading to a dungeon being transformed on the other side, and says that in the process, when the distorted dimensions of different worlds meet, a gate is created, and he comes back thinking about the car, explaining that the phenomenon hadn't been resolved in time, saying that the world inside the gate will explode and spread across. Reality. Outbreak. That's the name given to a phenomenon when the world in the gate explodes and spreads, saying that it's different from dungeons, and if they don't manage to conquer it on time, it will have a significant impact on the ending. He thinks that to get to the desired ending, he also needs to pay attention to the erosion rate of the gate, saying that it's also necessary for character growth, until his father says that they will get the key first after reaching it, and he asks where the gate key is, and his father explains that it is kept in the warehouse, while our hero reflects again, saying that after passing through a gate, you get a gate key with which you can release it again, and says that it was created by the game. Developers for players who wanted to release the gate again, and Kyunwoo thinks that it seems that the scenario is also working after his reincarnation, until his father comments that they had arrived, stopping the car, and his father says that this is his place of work, the Regulus clan. Our protagonist explains that the Regulus clan was established during the catastrophe by the first head of the Du family, saying that it now has several branches throughout the country, with access to the dungeons, gates, and monster habitats run by the government, but explains that it normally requires a hunter's certificate, but as he doesn't have one yet, he shouldn't be able to go through one. As his father enters the building, people greet him warmly, calling him the branch manager, welcoming him very well, and our protagonist says that his situation differs in the clan. However, as his father is the branch manager, and he thinks that he doesn't have to be strictly bound by these restrictions, and says that with his father's help, he can pass through the gate that is maintained by the clan. But before he can continue, someone starts grabbing our protagonist and the girl asks if he is the manager's son, hugging him, and she says that he looks totally innocent, and they're thankful he didn't take it from his father, with everyone smiling at the sight of him, and she says he's very cute, and asks if he also wants to become a hunter, and she asks them to see how elastic his cheeks are, saying she's going to hug him tightly with her muscles, while he's kissed and hugged several times. Someone greets the manager again, asking if he'd like to enter the gate with his son, and we seek Kyunwoo, full of lipstick marks and terrified, and he wonders if all hunters are like that. The receptionist comments that he should go to room 2, as planned, and she says that everything is ready and it's time to go, and our hero wipes his face, and we see that his father has received a key, and Kyunwoo asks about the key he has just received, and asks why it is white, and it is explained to us that the difficulty levels of the gates are differentiated by seven different main colors, starting with the easiest level which is the white key.
followed in order of difficulty by gray, then yellow, green, red, and blue, and the most difficult key is black. His father confirms this and says that the white key will be enough for him now. And Kunwu accepts this, but he thinks to himself that he at least wanted to go to the gray level until the gate suddenly opens with his father saying that they're going in now and his father asks if he'd seen it at the main house once and he says that this is an artificial gate and says that if he inserts a key obtained by clearing a dungeon there the gate will open leaving Kunwu surprised by this and he thinks that he'd heard that he can maintain a large clan thanks to the maintenance costs and can tell how powerful his family is now until his father calls him and says that they're going to enter the gate now and asks if he's ready for it and asks his son to think about it again, saying that if he enters, he won't be able to leave until he completes the dungeon and Kyunwu stays silent until he confirms by saying that he is and that he's thought about it enough while his father smiles until our hero says that if he doesn't manage to solve the dungeon, he wonders if his father couldn't do it in his place and his father confirms this, saying that if he fails, his father will be with him then asks him not to overdo it so much and asks him not to make him get a scolding from his mother until he inserts the key and the entrance begins to glow and he says that he is now activating the gate while we see it opening when it opens we see a cave with several crystals around it under a cave and our protagonist was walking under it and he thinks that this is the gate and a system message appears saying that he has entered the gate and that he is on the white level with a pink crystal cave and the victory condition is to eliminate the goblin monsters. With rank 1, there are 15 of them. After seeing the system window, he wonders if it's because it's a white level gate, but the condition for compensation is simple and he wonders where the goblins are, until he suddenly turns around, drops his backpack and points his wooden sword forward, getting a into a guard position, and thinks that it's dangerous so he should be more careful, and he starts looking around pointing his sword, thinking that he has to be on guard so as not to be caught by stealth by them until he notices something, seeing that his father was there, and we see that he had arrested all the goblins in the cave until he notices that Kunwu has arrived and his son asks if he has captured them all and he points his sword, saying yes, and they are all here now, and Kunwu starts counting, thinking that he has 15 in total, saying that the clear conditions and the number of goblins coincide with the mission to do, and he thinks that if he defeats them all, they will be able to clear the dungeon until he gets thoughtful about it and points his sword and takes the lead from his father, saying that he's ready now. His father asks if they should start then, and he says that Kyunwu can't deal with them all at once, so he intends to start one by one. His father begins to cut the rope with his sword, saying that he may be the weakest of the group, but asks him not to be careless when fighting, and says that he should be aware of this, but goblins are sneaky. But before he could continue talking, the goblin advances quickly with fury at our hero, and his father is impressed by this, while Kyunwu asks if he is talking about the fact that they are ferocious, and his father confirms this, asking him not to forget this. While the goblin was still advancing, our hero thinks to himself that he has knowledge of the games, but as a member of the divine fencing family, he also has knowledge of monsters, and he thinks about the goblin, saying that these creatures must have understood this situation immediately, saying that the only way they can survive this is by fighting our protagonist until the goblin pulls out one of the pink crystals and uses it as a knife. And Kyunwu thinks that this is what it's like to be desperate for survival and he had taken a crystal as a weapon and should be careful with it, saying that one small mistake could bring him down. He concentrates, thinking that it's a real fight and he should put his all into it and he uses the basic technique of the beast king style, his fifth form, his piercing stance and he quickly advances towards the monster, pointing his sword at it until he manages to cut it, making the goblin fall to its knees on the ground, and also the pink crystal fall from his hand, while Kyunwu sighed heavily and his father sighed with relief afterwards. Our hero finally smiles, saying that it's one less for now.